Hello, everybody. Embark on a captivating journey through mythology's watery realm as we encounter an enchanting array of sea deities. Explore their tales, behold their majestic forms, and discover the profound connection between humanity and the sea. So, let's begin. Leah. A tale from the Emerald Isles of Ireland introduces us to Leah, a god of the sea from the ancient Celtic pantheon. Leah was considered the personification of the sea itself, the ever-changing and ever-present force surrounding the isles. In traditional depictions, Leah was often represented as an elderly man, his features as weathered as the rugged coastal cliffs, his eyes as deep and mysterious as the ocean depths. His attire was woven from the elements of his dominion, a cloak of sea foam, a crown of coral and pearls, and a trident crafted from the strongest driftwood. But why the sea? Well, to the Celts, the sea was a significant part of life. It provided food, a means of travel, a barrier against invaders, but also a powerful, unpredictable force. They needed someone to appease, someone to thank, and someone to fear. Thus, Leah. His blessings granted safe travels and bountiful catches, while his wrath manifested in mighty storms and treacherous waves. Varuna from the Western Islands, we journey east to the vibrant cultures of India, where we encounter Varuna, a Vedic deity of the Hindu pantheon. Varuna, initially a sky god, was later regarded as the god of cosmic order, the night sky, and, most prominently, the god of all waters, from rain-laden clouds and vast oceans to the life-giving rivers and even the water within living beings. Varuna was often depicted as a fair, golden-skinned man, clad in resplendent garments. He wielded a noose, a symbol of his binding authority over the moral and societal order. His mount was Makara, a mythical sea creature, part fish and part beast, further emphasising his association with the waters. So why did Varuna reign over water? In the grand scheme of life, water is vital. It brings fertility to the land, nourishment to the creatures, and is an integral part of all life. Varuna's dominance over water symbolised his control over these elemental life forces, and his jurisdiction extended to moral and societal laws, maintaining harmony and order in the world. His rule over the water, therefore, was a reflection of his overarching governance of the cosmic order. Tiamat Our journey takes us to the cradle of civilization, ancient Mesopotamia. Here we encounter Tiamat a primordial goddess of salt water from Babylonian mythology. She personified the chaotic aspects of the sea, symbolising the destructive and creative powers of nature. Tiamat was often depicted in an intimidating form, embodying the essence of chaos. She was portrayed as a colossal sea dragon or serpent, a fearsome representation indeed. Some depictions also showed her as a woman, evoking her role as a mother goddess who birthed many of the early gods. But why the goddess of the sea, and particularly the chaotic sea? In the Babylonian creation myth, Tiamat was the mother of all gods, who later turned against her children in a vengeful fury. The watery chaos she symbolised represented the raw, undifferentiated mass from which creation sprung. After her defeat, her body was used to form the heavens and the earth, embodying the concept that from chaos, order is born. Hence. Tiamat's reign over the sea and its chaos was crucial, not only to her role as a progenitor, but also to the overall narrative of creation and order in Babylonian mythology. Poseidon Our journey now takes us to the sun-kissed shores of the Mediterranean and the grandeur of ancient Greece. Here we encounter the mighty Poseidon, one of the twelve Olympian deities and the god of the sea, earthquakes and horses. Poseidon was often depicted as a mature man, with a robust physique and a dark beard. He carried a trident, a three-pronged spear, a symbol of his dominion over the sea. His hair and beard were often shown as wave-like, further connecting him to his aquatic realm. But why the god of the sea? To the ancient Greeks, the sea was a source of both life and danger. It offered routes for commerce, supported abundant sea life for food, but it was also unpredictable and potentially destructive. Poseidon was a reflection of this duality. His mood swings were famous, able to shift from generous and calm to raging and vengeful, 
just like the sea. By invoking Poseidon's favour, sailors hoped for safe voyages, fishermen for bountiful catches, and everyone for protection from the sea's potential devastation. Enki Enki, also known as Ea, is the Sumerian god of water, knowledge, mischief, crafts, and creation. His influence is not limited to just bodies of water, but extends to all things involving life and civilization, given his association with wisdom and the creation of mankind. He is also known as the patron deity of the city of Eridu. Enki is often depicted as a bearded man wearing a horned cap and long robes that cover the body. He is usually represented in a seated position. In some cases, he is shown with two streams of water that begin at his shoulders and end at the ground, symbolising the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. According to the Sumerian mythology, he created the Tigris and Euphrates rivers and placed his dwelling there. The waters are often seen as a symbol of fertility and life-giving force, as they are essential for agriculture and therefore the survival and development of civilization. Enki was also seen as the god who deciphers the divine laws of the universe, which he then passes on to humanity, giving him an association with wisdom and magic. Njord Our journey now takes us to the icy shores of the Norselands, where we encounter Njord, the god of the sea and the winds. Njord hailed from the realm of the Vanir, a group of deities associated with fertility, prosperity and nature. Njord was often depicted as a wise and benevolent figure, embodying the tranquility and power of the sea. He was described as a tall, fair-haired man with a beard as golden as the sun. He often wore magnificent sea-themed attire, adorned with shells and pearls. In his hands, he held a ship's rudder, symbolising his command over navigation and seafaring. But why the god of the sea? To the Norse people, the sea was both a vital resource and a treacherous force. It provided food, facilitated trade and connected distant lands. Njord's association with the sea stemmed from his role as a protector and provider. He bestowed favourable winds and calm waters upon seafarers, ensuring their safe journeys. Njord's domain also extended to prosperity, as he governed wealth, fishing and maritime trade. His calming influence over the waves and his ability to harness the winds made him a revered figure among sailors and those whose livelihoods depended on the sea. Thus, Njord's reign over the sea represented the Norse people's respect for its power, their reliance on its resources and their desire for safe passage across its vast expanses. Yamaya our journey now takes us to the vibrant shores of the Yoruba region in West Africa, where we encounter Yamaya, a revered goddess of the sea and motherhood. Yamaya holds a prominent place in the pantheon of Orishas, the deities of the Yoruba tradition. Yamaya is often depicted as a beautiful woman with long, flowing hair, often adorned with seashells and pearls. She is depicted in flowing blue and white robes, symbolizing the vastness of the sea and the foaming waves. Sometimes, she is portrayed as a mermaid, with a fish tail instead of legs. Yamaya's association with the sea is deeply rooted in her mythology and symbolism. The sea, with its vastness and nurturing qualities, is seen as a maternal force, providing life, fertility and abundance. Yamaya embodies these aspects, representing the protective and caring nature of a mother. She is seen as the mother of all Orishas, and her nurturing presence extends to all living beings. Moreover, Yamaya's association with the sea extends beyond motherhood. She is also regarded as the source of wisdom, healing and emotional strength. The rhythmic sounds of the waves and the constant ebb and flow of the tides are seen as reflections of her guidance and influence. Sedna Our journey now takes us to the icy realms of the Inuit people in the Arctic regions, where we encounter Sedna, the goddess of the sea and marine life. Sedna holds a significant place in Inuit mythology and is considered a central figure in their cosmology. Sedna is often depicted as a beautiful woman with long flowing hair. However, she also possesses some unique features that set her apart. Her fingers and hands are depicted as long and skeletal, reminiscent of sea creatures or marine life. In some representations, she is shown with a fish tail, merging her essence with the creatures of the sea. Sedna's association with the sea is rooted in a powerful myth that explains her role and significance. 
According to the Inuit mythology, Sedna was once a mortal woman who faced great hardships and eventually found herself adrift on the sea. In her despair, she transformed into a sea goddess, becoming one with the waters that surrounded her. As the goddess of the sea, Sedna is believed to hold dominion over marine creatures and the ocean's bounty. Inuit people often look to her for abundance and sustenance, seeking her blessings for successful hunting and fishing expeditions. However, Sedna also possesses a more complex aspect. She is known for her wrath, and it is believed that neglecting to honour and respect her can result in a withholding of the sea's gifts, leading to scarcity and hardship. Kanaloa Our journey now takes us to the enchanting islands of Polynesia, where we encounter Kanaloa, a revered god of the sea and the underworld in Hawaiian and Polynesian mythology. Kanaloa is often regarded as a counterpart to the powerful god of the sky and creation, Kane. He is typically depicted as a benevolent and wise figure, often portrayed as an elderly man with a long white beard and flowing hair. He is associated with the depths of the ocean, and his presence evokes a sense of mystery and tranquility. In some depictions, Kanaloa is shown with tentacle-like appendages, reminiscent of the powerful octopus, symbolising his connection to the depths and the creatures of the sea. As the god of the sea, Kanaloa is revered for his knowledge and influence over the ocean and its creatures. He is often invoked by fishermen and sailors for safe voyages and bountiful catches. Kanaloa's association with the underworld also encompasses his role as a guide and protector of souls, ensuring the safe passage to the afterlife. In Hawaiian mythology, Kanaloa is closely associated with healing and spiritual practices. He is considered a master of healing arts, possessing profound knowledge of medicinal plants and the ability to bring balance and harmony to both the physical and spiritual realms. Kanaloa's reign over the sea represents the deep connection between the Polynesian people and the vast ocean that surrounds their islands. The sea serves as a source of sustenance, a means of travel and a getaway to the spiritual realm. Kanaloa's presence symbolises the reverence and respect the Polynesian people have for the ocean's power and the interconnectedness of all life. Thank you for joining me on this captivating journey through the realm of the mythological sea deities. I hope you found their tales as enchanting as the waters they preside over. If you enjoyed this exploration, I kindly ask you to like, subscribe and press the notification bell to stay tuned for more mythological adventures. Until next time, yours truly, Mythos the Historian.